We welcome you to this time of worship, and as we do so, we acknowledge that McClure United Church stands on Treaty 6 territory and homeland of the Métis Nation. We pay our respect to elders both past and present, wherever we find ourselves today. We also acknowledge our commitment as an affirming ministry of the United Church of Canada. We strive to be an open-minded, inclusive, and welcoming place of worship. It is our hope that no matter your age, race, class, ability, gender, gender identity, and sexual orientation, you will feel the warmth and blessing of God's love today. And we give thanks to God for this opportunity to gather together for worship, reflection, song, and prayer. May you feel God's blessing upon you today. Hello and welcome to Worship with McClure United Church. I'm so glad that you have chosen to spend this time with us. Interesting thing happened when I came into the chapel here to do some recording for our worship. Several residents noticed I was wearing a collar and they wondered why and were curious about that. And so I thought, well, maybe some of you folks might be wondering too. I have a funeral this afternoon and I often wear the collar when I do a funeral especially when that funeral is off-site. So today I'm going to the Saskatoon Funeral Home. For a lot of families, the collar is a sign of church, of importance, of, uh, of reverence. And so wearing the collar helps them feel like what they are doing is indeed within the church and is an important ritual of the church. So that's why I wear the collar when I lead worship away from the church building. So that's why I've got a collar on today. I have a few announcements I want to share with you. One is that the office will be open Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday in the afternoons this coming week. Our office administrator, Avon, is taking a bit of a holiday, and Irene is going to be covering, and she just comes in in the afternoons. If you can delay popping in until Avon is back, that would be really helpful. Of course, we will have someone answering the church phones. And if you are in need of me or in need of information or something, please leave a message and we'll get back to you as soon as we are able. Contacting the church office is not only a good way of getting hold of me or others or asking questions, but it's also you can also contact the website and the Facebook page for information or send us an email. I want to remind people about Coffee Time Friday mornings at 10 a.m. in the church parking lot. We bring a lawn chair and something to drink and we have really a great visit. In the past, <laughs> it's been so hot that we've needed fans and sandals for sure. I have a feeling that this week we're going to need jackets and perhaps mittens. It's certainly a much different uh, weather week this week. Everyone is welcome to join us for coffee, 10 a.m. Friday morning. My hunch is that you have heard the devastating news coming out of Haiti. And I know some of you would like to help. Financial donations can be made through the United Church of Canada's emergency fund. You can make donations to the fund by going to the United Church of Canada website. Donations to the church go directly to our partners on the ground in Haiti and in the affected regions. You can be assured that any gift that you give will be put to good use. Again, if you need more information about that, please contact the church office. I'd be glad to speak to you about how to help. Now I know Eden has some announcements for us, and so I turn things over to her now. Hello everyone, welcome back for another summer update. So, summer is almost over, I'm real sad about it too, but it's not over yet. I'd like to launch our end summer bingo. This is activities you can do around the city of Saskatoon. Most of them will be for free to soak up the last bit of summer as August winds down. Also, we are going to be having an animal trivia night on Friday, August 27th at 7 p.m. This is a kid-friendly event. All you will need is a main computer to be on Zoom with us and an additional device. 
to do a Kahoot trivia on it. Thank you so much for a wonderful summer, and I'll see you all in the fall. Take care. In the face of an oncoming storm, in the face of an unwinnable battle, in the face of a grieving world, God's love is sure. In the face of a boat overturning, in the face of an immovable foe, in the face of a grieving church, God's love overcomes. In the face that looks back from the mirror, in the face that I notice beside me, in the face of the known and the strange, God's love lives. With the best of who we are, and in spite of the worst of what can be, God's love lives. And we light this candle to remind us of God's love for us and for the world. We light this candle and remember God's promise to be a light for each of us, day after day. Let us pray. We come to this time of worship seeking your blessing, O oh God. We of all genders and all ages, we come to receive your teaching. We come to be shaped by you. We come in worship seeking encouragement, hope, direction, and peace. We come as we are. Lift our drooping chins, turn us toward the light, and call us forward. How endless is your love for us. In you, we are home. Amen. Reading from Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, indeed it faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are those who live in your house, ever singing your praise. Happy are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength, 
the God of gods will be seen in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than live in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. God bestows favor and honor. No good thing does the Lord withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, happy is everyone who trusts in you. May God bless to our understanding and our living these words of Holy Scripture. Would you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God. God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, friends, it's been exciting around here. There has been lots of talk these past couple of weeks about our church building. In particular, there's been talk about how to open to in-person worship. It's exciting to think about being together again in our common worship space. We've already taken some baby steps as we have figured out how to be safely open for funerals. In anticipation of our return, chairs were cleaned and the floors washed and polished. Banners have been dusted off and hung and plans to fix the soundproofing cloth that is drooping, well, it's in process. We have fired up the sanctuary computer and the projectors and we have put fresh batteries into all the things that need new batteries. Aylin and Shirley have got our instruments, the piano and the organ ready to go and they have even been practicing. They've also been offering the Ministry of Music at the funerals that we've hosted. Psalm 94 that Muriel read for us touched my heart this week as it is a celebration of the temple as the dwelling place of God. The psalm speaks of traveling to the temple in Jerusalem and of the awesome experience of entering that holy place. The psalmist celebrates that there is nothing that quite compares with being in the temple as the place that God is present to us. The psalm was most likely spoken and sung by pilgrims who were looking for a holy place, who were looking for God, who desired to be in the presence of the divine. For the people of that time, the temple was a place to come home to. Even the sparrow builds a nest and finds a home in the temple, the psalm says. In the temple, according to verse 3, I meet my king and my God. A double title which refers both to the ultimate power of God and the God of our personal lives. An experience in the temple could be both grand and intensely personal. The psalm was a reminder that God would meet Israel in a particular place. I believe God continues to meet us in particular places. We all need holy places. We all need a home. This past week was a busy week for many of us as we opened the church building to three funerals. The loved ones that were blessed along their journey were members of our McClure family. And it was so nice to see so many McClure United Church people come to support the Davidson, the Webb, and the Miller families. During the reception afterward, as, as we drank coffee and enjoyed a sweet, I heard several of the McClure Church folks say how good it was to be in the church building again, to be home. 
It's an amazing thing to be in the temple. It's an amazing thing to come home. I think this need to come home or be home is why the pandemic has been so difficult for so many. Many of us could not come or be home during the lockdown. And that was really hard. This summer has been good for our spirits, spirits as many of us have been able to travel again. Summer vacation is designed for homecoming. Students return home from school and young parents bring little ones home to grandma and grandpa so that they can rest and connect in a new way to their home. Summer gives us time to travel to those landscapes that ground us and are home to us. For some, that's where the waves crash against the shore. And for others, it's where the mountains play in the sky. And for others, it's where there is nothing but sky and more sky. We are a mobile society. It is becoming a small planet. Home is important to our well-being. We need home and sometimes we have to find home or make home wherever we are. That is what God's people in exile, those who would have sung the 84th Psalm were saying. They wanted to be home. They wanted to be in that place where God was present. This is what the church tries to live out in our time. When we are at our best, we are a people with open hearts, open minds, and open doors, creating a place to come home to. I received a note earlier this year from someone who worshiped with us for a while and then who has moved away. Their life, like many of ours, is a path of healing. This person gave thanks for our church and the people of the church. They were grateful for the support and care they received and were also grateful that they were able to contribute and give to the church family. They named McClure as their home. For most of us, the church is a home a place to believe, a place to belong, a place to become, a place of safety, a place called home. We need to come home to safety, home to grace, home to God, and the 84th Psalm teaches us this truth. I love the translation that is found in Eugene Patterson's book, The Message. One day spent in your house, this beautiful place of worship beats thousands spent out on Greek island beaches. There is the temple, the sanctuary. We look around and we see its beauty and maybe we remember something from the past. A wedding or a baptism or a stirring anthem or a spoken word to us by a preacher that seemed to be just what God might want to be saying to us. I have had weeks that were difficult, more negative than positive, more going out than coming in. And I have sat down in our sanctuary and I could almost hear, come home. Come home, you who are weary, come home. The temple can be and is a place to know God, to be home in God. Psalm 84 leads us to a further truth, and that is that God chooses to dwell among us. The temple is a physical place you can go to and then in the Gospels, Jesus teaches us that this bo his body is the temple and that if it is destroyed, God will raise it in three days. In Jesus, the fullness of God's presence dwells, and that is temple. And then later, 
in the letters of Paul, we discover that our bodies are temples for the Holy Spirit. God dwells in us and among us. We are the temples of God. God's temple is in the hearts and lives of transformed people. When someone comes to worship in the church, they may discover a beautiful sanctuary, but then they also meet someone. And there is acceptance and a divine holy connection is made. And then they and we begin to see each other. And we realize that it is the people who are also the temples. God is interested in holy places, but God is just as interested in holy people. And that's the business we're in. The business of building a temple, of offering shelter in the storm, shelter to the spiritually homeless. God's people, you and I, are in the construction business. We are building something. To me, it is the most important thing in the world because it affects every other dimension of our lives. Worshiping in a holy place, being in the temple, being reminded that God not only lives in our temple, but also that God lives in each of us. That's our mission. To be the temple, to be the dwelling place of God is to say with our words and our actions, this is a house of prayer for all people. To say with our words and with our actions to one another, you are a temple of the Holy Spirit and God dwells in you. To say with our words and our actions, come home. Come home, you who are weary, come home. May God grant us the wisdom and grace to be in the construction business, the construction of temples of brick and mortar, home to the searcher, and temples of the heart, home to love and justice, rest and renewal, home for you and for me, home for all. Amen. Spirit God, be our breath, be our song, blow through us, bringing strength to move on. Our world seems in word, defensive, withdrawn. Spirit God, be our song. Patient God, soothe our pride. Comfort us when we know you are near. We grow more certain our vision is clear. Patient God, calm our fear. Loving God, be our voice, be our prayer. Reaching out, joining hands as we we seek your guidance through friendship and care. Loving God, be our prayer. Spirit God, be our breath, be our song. Blow through us, bringing strength to move on. Through change, through challenge. Let us pray. God of creation, we give thanks for creation's beauty and its mystery. We have so much to learn about our interconnection to our planet home. 
We give thanks for cooler days and evening breezes, for life and growth in forest, fields, and gardens. We give thanks for all those who are in the struggle to contain forest fires, and for those who care for the animals displaced by the destruction. We pray for farmers who care for the land and who now struggle with the aftermath of a year of drought. We remember also all those dealing with the earthquake in Haiti. We pray that medical support might arrive quickly and that the people will have the strength to build again. God of peace and mercy, our world is marked by violence and war shouts. The languages of anger, hatred, and malice ring loud and can be heard across the globe. We think particularly today of our siblings in Afghanistan, and we pray for peace. We pray that calm might fill the earth and that all people will live in harmony and experience justice. God, in whose image we are created, our world is divided among many lines. We see each other separated under the categories of race, religion, gender, orientation, ethnicity, and economic status, rather than as being made beautifully diverse. We pray that we might learn to see each other as one family. Open us to the truth that our lives are bound together. It has been a difficult year, but we celebrate the opportunities for rest that summer brings and the opportunities many of us have had to go home, to be with family and with friends. We give thanks for our relationships with each other. Help us to honor them by never taking them for granted. God of renewal and refreshment, the church is called to witness to a life of abundance, forgiveness, and grace that is found in you. And we pray that we who call McClure United Church home and all our siblings may be empowered to live out this call. Help us never stop learning about you. And by your spirit, teach us your ways and give us courage to live as you desire. Tender-hearted God, among our families and friends, we know that some are suffering from disease and pain, from grief and loneliness, from fear and despair. God, we pray for these people, so precious to us. We pray for relief, for peace, for the ability to sleep well and rise encouraged each new day. Help us as providers of comfort and care to be present to our loved ones. God, you alone know the secrets of our hearts. And so we offer now our personal prayers in a time of silence. We continue to pray as our teacher taught us to pray. Our Father and Mother who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We leave this time of worship and we go to enjoy the last few days of this summer season. At home or away, God is with us. In good times and in challenging times, God will support us. As we face our challenges, God will steady us. As we strive to welcome others, God will call us to open hands and hearts. 
We have confidence. We go in hope. For God goes with us. And wherever we are, we are at home. Thanks be to God. Amen. Like a rock, like a rock, God is under our feet. Like the starry night sky, God is over our head. Like the sun on the horizon, God is ever before. Like the river runs to ocean, our home is in God rock, God is under our feet. Like the starry night sky, God is over our head. Like the sun on the horizon, God is ever before. Like the river runs to ocean, our home